Hey there, everybody. This is Mia with Project Nerd. I am here with Henry Butash. Butash? I said that right, yes. There you go. <laughs> Doing an interview for the Denver Film Festival. He is the writer and director for his wonderful film, The Atlantic City Story. Um, I was actually born in Atlantic City. I am from no Jersey. No kidding. How funny. <laughs> That's amazing. When I was uh, offered this one, this film and to interview you, I was like, this seems, this seems right. This feels right. Like I'm supposed to do this. How great. Did you uh, grow up there or was it just part of your life? How, I did. How I, well, the first eight years of my life. And then I had a couple other years down yeah. the road that, that I spent there, but yeah, yeah. A, a solid portion of my life was there. How funny. Amazing. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about, tell me about your film. Sure. Uh, well, I grew up in New Jersey as well. Uh, just, I grew up in the North, uh, okay. but still, you know, going down to the shore was a very big part of uh, summers and uh, especially Atlantic City was sort of a, always kind of a very mythic place to me, just in terms mm. of what it represented. Yeah. Um, I remember the first time I went there was uh, to see an Elton John concert with my mom when I was a kid. What? Oh, I'm and, so uh, jealous. Yeah. Uh, and so I just, I knew, I knew I wanted to make a film in New Jersey just because of, you know, the close emotional attachment I have to the state. And I just thought Atlantic City was sort of the perfect backdrop uh, dramatically for, for a narrative. And, you know, from there, uh, I just kind of started building the script and, uh, you know, now we, now we have a film, so. Absolutely. There's, uh, well, I think it's even more poetic that Atlantic City had been destroyed and was then rebuilt, which seemed to par to be a parallel to the story that you have written with Jane? That's the character's name, yes. Yes, Jane. yes, yeah. I remember, with Jane and yeah. uh, things falling apart for her, but then she's realizing she needs to pick it back up again. Um, so now that I know that it th that you have, that you picked Atlantic City because you're from Jersey, now I have to ask the most important question. Do you say water or do you say water? I say water. <laughs> That's a good question. It's it's a defining thing for yeah. people from Jersey. It tells you it tells you where. Um, I I was born with water, but I always say water. If I, if I hear water, I'm thinking like a lumberjack, like you're chopping wood. But I've asked my aunt. She says if we say water, it sounds like someone's waddling. Yeah, there's That's also the, there's also the uh, the pork roll Taylor Ham uh, debate as well. Depending that is on a what debate. You call that that yeah. is a whole thing. Oh, I totally forgot about that. I haven't lived there in so long that sometimes you you forget some of the stuff. That's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Getting back to the film, tell me about your favorite parts. My favorite parts, I think, yeah. uh, of the film itself or the process of of making it. Yes, uh, whichever one you want to go first. I think just the process of making it. Uh, to me, the highlight is really the kind of collaboration with the actors, mm -hmm. um, you know, both Jessica Hecht and, and Mike Feist, uh, who are the two leads. To me, it was just exciting to sort of, even before we started shooting, going through the script, rehearsing, changing parts of the story uh, based on things they wanted to incorporate and uh, rewriting lines so that it, it always felt kind of organic and natural coming out of their mouths rather than you know, some some kind of thing I had thought of and wanted to to force them into. Mm -hmm. um, so it was much more about molding the characters uh, to their strengths and talents. And uh, and just that sort of back and forth was really enjoyable. And it continued all the way, you know, through production as well. Uh, just, you know, kind of uh, with each scene, you know, experimenting and kind of finding our way through things and trying different takes. And uh, I think their performances in the film are, uh, you know, so great. So to answer the other part of the question, that's also my favorite part of the film itself is just their performances. Uh, you know, it was so fun editing the film because I would just get to watch their performances over and over. I would get to relive the experience of shooting it. Um, so it was a real privilege to work with them and a, and a highlight for me. That's that's amazing. Is that a, a take that you wish to continue on in terms of directing is you want to make it open for, for actors' interpretations? I think so. I, I definitely enjoy working that way. And I think it allows for uh, very organic performances and very kind of, uh, you know, not to say there's anything 
better about something that's real or theatrical because you know you can really convey a lot of emotion with something maybe uh with heightened theatrics as well Absolutely. so i don't i don't think there's anything necessarily better one way or the other uh but i do like kind of just really making something organic to the character mm -hmm. and just making the character feel kind of lived in uh and just uh allowing someone watching the film to almost be able to imagine what scenes we didn't film would be like just because they have such a kind of clear idea of uh, who this character would be both on screen and off. Um, and so kind of creating that full full dimension uh, is something I really like. So, you know, with Mike and Jessica, we would talk about things that aren't even in the film, just, uh, you know, about their characters and, and how they might react to certain situations or backstory type stuff. Um, so I definitely, uh, you know, I'm interested to continue working that way as well. That's amazing. That that speaks to me like you aim to make great films, which only further begs the question, what to you actually makes a great film? What makes a great film? Mm -hmm. Gosh, that's a very difficult question, but uh, fantastic. Oh, <laughs> um, wow. I don't know. I wouldn't know how to define it. Uh, there's definitely the wonderful thing is you know it when you see it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just tell watching a movie that there's either, you know, it's either working or it's not. You can feel that kind of magic. Absolutely. Um, I don't know what necessarily makes a great film. Certainly something that expands your, uh, your perspective of uh, understanding. Uh, definitely uh, sort of a tool of empathy, uh, for sure. Anything that kind of allows you to... to uh, share some kind of greater understanding beyond what, what you had before. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> I aim to challenge. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, what got you into film? I uh, was just always kind of into movies. Uh, it's an excellent question as well. I, uh, you know, ever since I was a little kid, just enjoyed watching movies and from a young age was very curious about who made them uh, and how they were made. Uh, and then luckily I had parents who supported that career path. And so even from a young age, it was just sort of uh, exposure to, to wonderful, fantastic films that uh, were such an education. Uh, you know, even movies that I didn't know uh, were considered classics at the time. It's my yeah. parents just had a kind of notion of, of what to show me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, just over time, thankfully my interest never waned and, uh, you know, I just kind of continued on that route, uh, exploring, exploring film and then eventually uh, working professionally. So what are your favorite films? Uh, I, that's an excellent question. I don't know. I, I would say you could just give me a genre or a time period, a decade or, oh. a, a, you know, a, a, a country, a national cinema. And I, <laughs> I, th I think, uh, you know, there's really great films to be found in almost every corner. Uh, and every kind, whether it's a studio film or a you know very small independent film, a documentary, uh, you know foreign cinema, uh, you know there's just uh, I really love kind of expanding my understanding of of what a movie is, rather than kind of just thinking this is what a, a movie looks like. Uh, you know you can always kind of expand that understanding. So absolutely, all right. You you got your way out of out of answering the question. I yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, you can see behind me, I have a, you know, there's a rebel without a cause poster hanging yeah. on my wall. So that's certainly a favorite. Nicholas Ray is a, a favorite director of mine. Um, you know, he's so great at kind of eliciting performances and the way he's attuned to architecture with his, uh, with his cinematography is always very interesting. Uh, he had been a student with Frank Lloyd Wright. And so architecture had always kind of been uh, a side interest for him. Uh, so I'll just, that's one name I'll, I'll throw but out. Does that inspire you though? Do you, do you take that into, con into consideration as well when you're... I think location for sure is definitely a very strong consideration. I mean, just in the Atlantic City story alone, mm -hmm. it really was important to us just trying to get uh, all these kind of different locations uh, into the film. And so, you know, we've got scenes on the beach where it's sort of these very wide open spaces uh, or in the casino where there's facades uh you know it's it looks great but it's obviously not quite uh what it seems to be right 
Um, and then just over time and, and the way Atlantic City has gone, there's, uh, you know, some buildings that are kind of falling apart as well. And so, you know, I think I'm certainly by no, no stretch uh, an expert in architecture, but definitely uh, I'm attuned to sort of the, the interplay between a location and, and the characters and the story we're trying to tell. So. Okay. If, considering the story that you're trying to tell. What inspires you to write? What inspired you to write this film? Uh, I get very inspired, first of all, from life. I think that's, you know, easily the, the best inspiration. Yes. Um, and so when I was writing, I would just go down to Atlantic City on the weekends and, and hang out in the casinos and just sort of watch the people come and go and, and who was hanging out there, mm -hmm. uh, either by themselves or, or with others. Um, and then talking to people who had similar experiences as the characters. And so there's one side that's very much inspired by observation and, and real life. And then I get very inspired to write as well from literature and from other films and, and just other art in general. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's a handful of movies that were big inspirations for us, like uh, Jacques Demy's Bay of Angels kind of has a Hold up. similar, similar type plot. Yeah, that was kind of like a similar type plot um, where, uh, you know, it's an older woman and a younger man and they're kind of in Nice, which, you know, is a gambling, seaside gambling resort in, in France as well. Uh, so it has same kind of seaside resort element and uh, both of those characters are also trying to escape their problems. Uh, there's Anton Chekhov's Lady with the Dog, which I think is an amazing, one of his best short stories. Um, and uh, that was a huge inspiration as well about, you know, these two, uh, two older people kind of experiencing an uh, extramarital affair uh, mm -hmm. while on vacation uh, before having to go back home to their uh, previous lives. Um, and so for me, the process was going down to Atlantic City mm -hmm. and observing real life and then, you know, absorbing, uh, you know, literature and film and, and anything kind of tangentially related and, and just absorbing it and processing it and then kind of spitting it back out onto the page, so. That's magnificent. Now, <laughs> now for my favorite question. It's okay. the question of the season for all of my interviews. Yeah. And that is, if you had an unlimited budget, what kind of film would you want to make? Or a couple of films, just unlimited budget, what would you want to make? Gosh, uh, do you know oh. anyone? That sounds great. <laughs> Uh, there are certainly uh, some stories uh, that I would love to do, a, a lot of period films. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, kind of historical fiction I would be very interested in, in doing. Um, not necessarily famous historical events, but sort of things that happen on the, on the sidelines to historical events. Like a couple degrees to the left. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously a period film costs a substantial amount of more money. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see, you know, maybe down the, down the road. <laughs> I'm excited for you. Thank you. Me too. What was, what was your greatest takeaway from creating a film? Greatest takeaway? Hmm. Is it that I can apply to making a film the next time or? Yes. Hmm. Like what you learned that will stay with you forever because it was, I'm assuming your first film. Yeah, uh, I would say we worked with an amazing group of people. Hmm. And if anything, it confirmed to me uh, how much that is really making a film. That's sort of the job of a director is not to uh, basically just execute some vision in their head it really is to just sort of have a general idea of where the ship needs to go uh and to con communicate that with a wonderful team of people who can bring their own experiences and their own talents and their own tastes to the project and to make it something more than just what i can imagine in my head so really that sort of additive uh collaborative process that can make a movie uh kind of beyond what any one person could do. I think it's really uh, exciting and it allows me to kind of get excited by the film. You know, if the movie just looks exactly like kind of what I thought it would and, and uh, the thing in my head, yeah. uh, 
it almost would just be kind of pointless to me. So to me that it's the process of discovery that is really exciting. And I think when you work with really talented people, that's when you really get inspired by what you're doing. And so, you know, we worked with extremely talented people on this one. And I think, uh, you know, it's just a lesson to continue doing that and, you know, to not settle. Perfect. Since you already have had such an incredible collaborative effect with your film, do you have, uh, I, I don't know if top tier is the right way to say it, but other writers or directors that would be, that you would just love to collaborate or create with? Gosh, I don't know. I've never thought about that. Um, there are so many wonderful writers and directors. I don't know how I could collaborate with another director without asking them to co-direct with me. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know who would be open to that. Um, but there's certainly a lot of writers I really love. Uh, Bo Goldman, for example, I think is one of the great, great screenwriters. And, uh, you know, he's still around. He hasn't written anything much lately, but, you know, so many, so many great films uh, that he did. Melvin and Howard, uh, Scent of a Woman, uh, Shoot, Shoot the Moon is a fantastic movie he wrote. And so he's really uh, sort of not as well known today, but, uh, you know, such such great script so moving uh and just a guy who seems like uh he's had so much kind of lived experience and he's found a way to to translate that in a very emotional way and, and to communicate those emotions uh it, this, it, the skill he has of communicating those emotions i think is uh you know really incredible so uh he'd be someone that i'd love to meet and and ask him you know that's uh you know what, what do you have, you know, anything like that. I'd love to just kind of pick his mind of, of how he does it, uh, honestly, so. Absolutely. Now for the final question of the okay. year. Where can we find you in your film? Uh, right now we're playing in the Denver Film Festival. Mm -hmm. We'll be uh, streaming there through November 8th. Uh, that is geo-blocked to folks in Colorado at the moment. Okay. Uh, but the plan is to uh, hopefully play uh, more festivals around the country in, in the coming months. Uh, you know, obviously with COVID, things are always shifting, but, uh, you know, yeah. the aim is to get the movie out there to as many people as possible. Absolutely. So. How about social media? Uh, I don't think we have any social media. Okay. Done that. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can Google the movie and, you know, it'll show up on go the internet. But yeah, go from there. Exactly. Just read, Google it. Yeah, Google it. I actually have I actually have notes written over here. <laughs> I really took them. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Henry. I really genuinely appreciate the time that you took out to let me interview you today. Once again, this is Mia. I'm with Project Nerd. You can't see it on my shirt, but I got the glasses. I promise I'm with them. And doing this interview for the Denver Film Festival, Henry Butash. Atlantic City Story, go watch it. Thank you, Mia. You're welcome.